one of the more unique aspects to voxel sculpting in 3D Coat is that you can do things with it that simply are not possible with geometry sculpting in other applications or in 3D Coat for that matter because we also happen to have a geometry sculpting platform called Surface Mode. You have two different modes that you can utilize at any given time. Surface mode is indicated by the S on the left side of the layer in the sculpt tree hierarchy panel. If you see a V, that indicates that layer is currently in voxel mode, which is somewhat of a hybrid mode itself because you do have the option to pick a surface brush while in voxel mode, but what it will do is temporarily suspend the process of voxelization as long as a surface brush is selected. When you are sculpting with voxels, you are seeing an adaptive outer mesh conform to changes to the volume in real time. However, when you switch to a surface brush, that outer mesh is no longer dynamic, it's static. Currently, this is in surface mode. It means that it's pushing and pulling vertices or polygons in 3D space. For example, if I wanted to carve through these grooves around the stones, I can do that with voxels, but I cannot do that with surface sculpting or geometry sculpting. So while I'm in surface mode, I'll go ahead and attempt to do something like that. Let's use the draw brush. I'll invert the tool so that it's not extruding from the surface, but rather indenting into the surface. As I'm sculpting, you can see all it's really doing is pushing those vertices. So. Let me undo that. And now I'm going to switch to voxel mode by clicking that icon. I'll just stick with the default amount here. Let me use something like airbrush in voxel mode. Now 3 coat will be performing voxelization when I brush. Okay, so again, I will invert my tool so that it's actually going inward instead of extruding in an outward direction. I should mention an important side note here, and that is sometimes you may accidentally grab empty space, and when you click and drag outside the object, 3D Coat will attempt to navigate or rotate around the object. So to disable that, what you can do is go to the navigation options menu and disable it in the view that you want. So for example, if you want to disable it in both orthographic view and perspective view, you could do that. But in this case, I am choosing to do it only in orthographic view by leaving it unchecked. By the way, you can toggle perspective and orthographic view by hitting the five key on your number pad. Now, when I'm sculpting, I don't have to worry about being interrupted by accidental navigation rotation. In some of these draw modes, your brush pressure modulates the intensity or the depth value. So I can choose maybe this third one, where radius, depth, and opacity is modulated with brush pressure. Another good option that we have is to use a more non-destructive workflow by switching to Vox Hide. This will allow us to use shape draw modes or brush draw modes. I can essentially hide or degrade areas and then later, if I choose to, I can go back and reveal or restore all or parts of the volume. So right now I'm just smoothing the rough edges a little bit. Now the thing to remember about Voxhide is it's quite different than a typical sculpting brush because with a sculpting brush, you can arbitrarily set the depth level, how much it's going to indent or extrude 
whether it's a small amount or a large amount or somewhere in between. But with Voxhide, it is essentially like brushing with an invisible sphere and everything inside that sphere gets hidden. Currently, this object is not as deep as my brush is wide, but if I use a much smaller brush that's not as wide as this object is deep, then I have to use multiple strokes to hide all the way through the object. One option that we have instead of using a standard brush draw mode is we could use the newer curves and have 3D Coat brush along those curves. We have a freeform mode here, so let's give that a try. Okay, now I'm going to use the bracket keys on my keyboard in order to increase the brush size just a bit. And then I need to select them all. One way to do that is go to the curves tree and we can shift click from one to the last one. With them all selected, I can right click and choose brush along curve. In some areas it did go all the way through. But in other areas, again, because of the brush size, we need to do it once again. So I can hide all these now. And I can go back with a regular brush. And I can reveal parts with my brush by holding down the control key. So now instead of trimming away, I'm actually restoring parts of the model once again. I'm going to hold the shift key, I'm going to smooth a little bit along the edges. All right, if we are done, we can now have 3D Coat either separate the hidden parts from the visible parts in voxel mode, or we could switch to surface mode where we have the option to separate all the individual disconnected parts into their own layer. We could also elect to have all the hidden parts deleted or removed from the scene permanently if we so choose. While it's still in voxel mode, I just chose the option to separate the hidden parts to their own layer. And that's going to conclude this part one video on what makes voxel sculpting powerful and unique. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video.